In the beginning of this basement renovation, I went through this journey to figure out what I want this basement to look like. The BDI Corridor 8173 TV stand illustrates everything that you should be looking for when buying a media stand. Now, if you like this type of content, if you could do me a favor by hitting that like button and that subscribe button. Now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive in. So one of the first things I want to show everyone is the actual unboxing of the BDI TV stand. When I went through my search and research to figure out what type of TV stand I wanted to look for, I was trying to figure out other people's experience with BDI, Salamander, just to name a few AV media stands. And one thing that I couldn't find through my search or research through trying to figure out videos. There's only a couple of videos off the D BDI specifically in Salamander, but no video specifically that goes into the whole unboxing. So I thought this was a great opportunity to show everyone what the unboxing looks like for the BDI TV stand, or more specifically, the BDI Corridor 8173. Now the reason why I purchased the Corridor 8173 is for the form and function. Nobody doesn't want to buy an ugly media stand under their fancy new TV. And so that was one of the main reasons why I went with BDI Corridor. The BDI Corridor is a beautiful looking stand. It has that modern look that matches everything with my setup. The stand is made out of solid wood and on top it has a satin etched glass, durable from scratches, and it has a gap between the wood where air flows through. One of the other benefits that it has is hidden wheels where it's easy for you to move in and out the cabinet from tight spaces. Now inside the BDI corridor, you'll find a couple of empty boxes just to make sure that it will support the inside of it so nothing would get damaged when it goes to transportation. So I'm just showing a couple of empty boxes just to show that they had that inside the AV cabinet to make sure nothing was loose or anything that will come out of place. Besides the empty boxes, you also see the parts that come with the actual stand itself where you see the rollers that I am currently trying to install. When I originally did the unboxing, I noticed that the cabinet doors were out of line. But the good news is, is that in the instructions, the cabinet doors are adjustable. So once I was able to put everything together, I was able to adjust the cabinet doors and everything were just aligned. So people who do get this BDI TV stand specifically, when you do the unboxing and you notice that the actual cabinet doors are out of line, you can adjust them. So those are very good news because I thought I was gonna to have to take this back and I didn't want to go through the whole trouble of picking this item up, having my buddy come back over and take and shipping it back to the store. So what you're seeing me doing right now is I'm currently installing the wheels that I have to install underneath the BDI media stand. So that's one of the other business benefits that I mentioned earlier is, is that it's easy to install and put together and it also is very helpful when you need to move your media cabinet to get access to certain equipment. So what you see on the top of this stand, you see four opening holes and those holes itself will help airflow from your equipment, your AV equipment, or any other equipment from Apple TV, PlayStation, Xbox, DVD players, AV receivers, whatever the case may be, that generate heat. Heat that is also another access airflow of where the heat can dissipate from. So that's what you see right there. And afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and put in the glass top which you will see later in the 
installation video. So as I mentioned before at the four holes at the top of the media stand, I'm about to go ahead and flip this over to install the wheels, but you also see additional ventilation holes you'll see at the bottom where you also will see where the airflow and the heat will dissipate from. Also what's really neat about the BDI TV stand is you can see those circular holes at underneath the TV stand. They are also used for cable management if needed. And what I'm also showing is the back panel where you also see additional ventilation. So overall you will see multiple airflow vents throughout the media stand. So you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever when it comes to having equipment that runs a little bit hot. You know that you will get enough airflow when it comes to this media stand. Now that I installed the legs, I'm about to go ahead and flip the media stand back over. But one thing I want to go over and cover is the actual front doors. Now, if you take a look at it a little bit more closely, you can see that they have air that can pass this through and it's good for infrared remotes that pass signal to your AV equipment. So right when I'm about to flip this over, you kind of can see it, the panels are a little bit see-through. It's called a slate cabinet doors. So right when I'm about to flip it over right now, you can kind of see through the, re the media stand itself and you can see that it gets more than enough ventilation. As I'm installing the door handles, if you curious to know that the doors are soft closed. So that's a really good benefit, especially when it comes to a media stand. And also for the BDI corridor, it also is able to fit a sound bar within the cabinets. You can make it very adjustable to your certain height. And one of the absolute major benefits about this media stand is, is that I'm able to securely fit a AV receiver. Now, people really don't really realize that if you buy a regular media stand, let's just say Ikea, Target, any of those furniture stores that say is a TV stand, most TV stands that you see out there you will see that the depth wise are less than 17 inches. With the BDI corridor or any BDI or even sound in this case, they have a depth of 20, 20 inches. So this has more than enough room to securely put your AV receiver while taking out the back panels on the back of your media cabinet. And those are one of the great benefits because some people just don't want to have the back panels open to display all the wires that's coming out from the AV receiver. So those are one of the things that I think people really, really need to realize is that before they go ahead and purchase a new TV stand to house their new TV, one thing is to look at the actual depth of the TV stand. Now, if you want to know the dimensions, the height is 21 inches, the width is 79.25 inches, and the depth is 20.25. So this is specifically for the corridor, 8173 is the one that I purchased. So for my use case scenario, this is perfect for a media stand for housing the AV equipment that I'm going to have in this media stand. The next thing I'm about to do is install the rubber bumpers that go on top of the media stand. So the reason why you have to use these rubber bumpers is right before you put the tempered glass on top of the media stand, you have to make sure you put those bumpers just before you install it, just so the tempered glass don't move around. So that's what you're going to see me do is I'm about to go ahead and place these rubber bumpers all around the media stand. Oh yeah, and also I, I forget to mention is, is that with these rubber bumpers, that's where the gap I was mentioning earlier before is with the media stand and when you put the tempered glass on top of it, 
that's where you see that gap where you see that additional airflow from where the heat would dissipate, especially where you see those four holes on top of the stand. That will kind of help where when you have the glass on top of it, where all the heat will dissipate on top of the front, the bottom, and the back of the panel, and even below the panel. So you make sure that you have more than enough heat dissipation or ventilation when it comes to airflow for your AV equipment. So right now you're about to see me go ahead and put the glass on top of the stand. I will advise everyone that it should be a two person that should be helping you when it comes to the stand because the glass is pretty heavy, but I was able to put it on top safely. I was lucky that nothing was broken, but I will advise that if you ever do this unboxing and decide to get a BDI, just make sure that you have it, make sure you get some help from another person when, especially with the glass portion, because if you break it, then, you know, I hate to go to the manufacturer, try to figure out how to get that replaced. But for this, uh, I was able to successfully do it. So here's the finished product after doing the unboxing to doing the installation. Here is the final product of the BDI Corridor 8173. So you can see here that I just put my router in there, just my wireless router just for now. Uh, it's not gonna be a permanent spot, but it is something that I just had to put there for just because it was just bothering me. But if you look at the cabinets, you can see that you have plenty of room to put a sound bar right in the middle. You have more than enough room to put your AV receiver your PlayStation, your Xbox, pretty much any type of AV equipment you could think of. You definitely have more than enough ventilation when it comes to your equipment, so you never have to worry about anything getting overheated. But I'm about to go ahead and end this video, so if you do like this type of content, if you could do me a favor by hitting that like button and that subscribe button, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks again. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you.